Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, we have discussed what wavelets are and what are the various types of wavelets available and different types of wavelet transforms. So as a continuation to the previous video, in this video, we will discuss how we can use these wavelet transforms for developing a models which have a greater prediction capability compared to a singular models. So in this video, Initially, we will talk about the concept we will use for developing these models and then we will see what is an example of developing a coupled or a hybrid model and compare this model with a simple machine learning model. So in this video, we will use a HAR wavelet to decompose our input signal and to have different values at different frequencies to be able to develop this hybrid model. So in order to do this, we will use an inbuilt function in MATLAB called as modwt. What is modwt? Modwt is a linear function which partitions the signal which we give in based upon the kind of wavelet we use and also based on the number of scales we want the data to be partitioned. So this concept is already inbuilt in MATLAB. So using that function, we can directly use the kind of wavelet we want and divide it at different scales to see how this data is useful for developing a good prediction model. As you can see here, the simple details about modwt in MATLAB, we can directly use the function modwt of data and get the information or else we can also give these various functions which are mentioned here and get the data sets of the coefficients with various scales with various wavelets. So in this video we will use a HAR wavelet and we'll use a data set of a discharge value. If you see here, I've already put the discharge value in MATLAB here. This is the plot of discharge as you can see here. These are the discharge values of the data for around 4000 days and we'll use this discharge data to predict tomorrow's discharge. This concept which we have already discussed in our earlier videos while developing a singular model, we will use the same concept here to develop a hybrid model and compare it with those models. So the first thing we'll do here for decomposing data is we will use the mod wt to be able to get this decomposed data. So while doing this mod wt, one thing we need to take into our consideration is the type of wavelet we are using and the number of scales. So in this video, I'll not go in depth into all this concept. We will keep it briefly and I'll use the number of scales with the highest value, which is a 10 for a wavelet called HAR. So we will use HAR wavelet with 10 decompositions and then we will discuss how we can use number of scales in those 10 different uh, frequencies and get a better model. So if we see here, we'll initially write a one command which will help us to be able to get this uh, decomposition of data. So this is the command which we have uh, written in MATLAB to be able to decompose the data. As you can see here, we have named it as decompose data and we will use the mod wt here to be able to decompose using HAR wavelet at 10 scales. So one thing we need to keep in mind here is we are decomposing it with the value of 10. We will have one redundant value giving us 11 data sets which are decomposed data. As you can see here, when I evaluate the data, we get the results with 11 matrices with the overall number of input variables which we have given. So these are all the decomposed data. These are the data which are obtained from our discharge. So what happened here is we have a discharge signal and then these data sets are frequencies of data at different signal which are extracted from this one signal. So when we combine all these decomposed data, we get the overall signal which is the original value. So this is how the decomposition is done. And as you can see here, there are a lot of negative values as well because these decomposition is taking out values at different frequencies thereby we have values of negatives. So now we can just uh, transpose the data so that we have the data in our column matrix for our understanding. So after we got this data set, if we see a plot of the data, 
this data set if you see with the original data set here we can see that it is resembling the same pattern but this is of a different magnitude and frequency thereby we have both positives and negative values so in order to have our model without any issue the next thing we do here is we normalize the data if you remember in our earlier videos we have already written a code for that so we will directly use that code and normalize the data as you see here if you have not yet seen that video you can find the link of the video in the description or you can find out in the i bar here as you see here this is that command which we have come up with in our previous video and the only thing which we do is just run this command and we will get a, uh, a normalized data in our previous video we used only one variable or two variables so we were able to normalize it uh, using this so we'll make a small change by including the total number of variables now if we evaluate it we'll get the normalized values so this is the command which we have used in our previous video the only modification we do is uh, we put the name of our decomposed data and the number of uh, columns in those data as you see here i've given the name as decomposed data and the values as 11 so if you see here we got a uh, variable with named normal data which is the normalized data of these 11 components if you see here there are no more negative values and there are only positive values another thing which we need to do before using this data for our model of prediction is we normalize our original data as well because we will use our present day's discharge along with this decomposed frequency values to get tomorrow's data so now the data whatever we have if you see in the figure here we have data which is ranging from 0 to 7000 so when we are trying to make this prediction the model will not be able to predict this thing correctly because we use part of data for training and the remaining for testing it's not easy for the model to be able to differentiate these values when there is lot of change so we normalize the data so that we have very less changes and thereby making it easier for the model to predict these values we will use the same command which we have used for the earlier normalization we will just change the name of our uh, normal data as normal data one so that we don't replace our normalized data of the decomposed variables so if you see here we got a normalized data for our original values as well and also for the decomposed value so the next thing before developing this model is we need to put the normalized values of our frequency decomposition along with our present day's value in one data and we need to divide the data into training and testing so that we can give it directly into the code for developing a wavelet hybrid model so once we have added this data the next thing we need to do is divide the data for testing and training so if you see here we can use these four lines for dividing the data into training and testing where first one to three thousand data i'm taking it as for training and the remaining data set I'm doing it as testing. So for the training of the data set, our target will be tomorrow's discharge. So that is the reason why here I am putting 2 ish to 3001 instead of 1 ish to 3001 because 1 is our present day value. Let's say it's January 1st, that is our starting date. So I'm giving the target as 2nd of January, thereby the data is trying to predict tomorrow's discharge. So we follow the same procedure for our testing as well, where I'm telling the testing data is from 3001 to 4719 because we use our testing target from 3002 to 4720. So in order to maintain the same length, I'm removing one value from our training data set, thereby allocating it for our testing data set. So if I run this, you can see that these are the data sets which we have obtained for our training and testing and you can see that all the training values and testing values have the same lengths thereby making it easier for us to check that we are not causing any errors while developing this model so once we have obtained the data the next step is using this data with a simple neural network model thereby combining it as a hybrid model 
So this is the command which we are going to use for developing this neural network model with inputs from our wavelet decompositions. So this code, if you have not yet seen earlier, you can watch it in our previous video, which is available in the description as well as here. We have discussed how we obtain this code and what are the lines of code which we wrote for getting this command to be able to develop a simple neural network model. So we'll use the same line here, but we will use this wavelet inputs so that we make a wavelet hybrid model, thereby expecting that our results would be better than a simple model. So first we will use this line to get the results of our wavelet hybrid model and then quickly develop a simple neural network model and compare the results so that we can determine how good this wavelet is improving our results. So if you see here, the things which we are inputting into the data here is, the first one is our training data followed by our training target and then followed by our testing inputs as you can see here with the name test followed by the number of neurons again we are using our basic neurons of 10 with one number of iterations that is i'm asking the model to run only once and then at the end we are giving the targets of our testing so that we can test the data set which is obtained from this neural network and get the error values so with this line we are accessing two codes which is our neural network code and our error calculations code which are available in the description which we have already discussed you can go there to understand the brief details about how these are developed and how you can use them for your purposes so coming back to this line if we run the line here we can see that the neural network is running and once it is completed we get the results with error values so if you see here there is a the, there are results in our screen we will omit the values of the figures for now and directly go to the results part if you see here er underscore tr is our training data set and with the values in the results here we can see that the Correlation value is around 0.59, which is generally not a very great value compared to what we have seen in our earlier videos having more than 0.7. But one thing we need to keep in mind here is we are using only present day's discharge to get tomorrow's discharge as this thing is generally not sufficient because discharge needs to have a lot of other variables like precipitation and different lag components to give a better result. So here we are getting a training value of 0.59 but if you see the testing value we are getting a value of 0.60. So let's just keep in mind that our training values is 0.59 correlation and our testing value is 0.60. So with this in mind we will just run a simple neural network model without the inputs of wavelets and see how we are getting these results. The only change here is instead of using the the normal data which we have used with decomposed components we will use normal data one which is our original data with only one data set so once i run this code we can see that after the running of the code we got figures which are similar to our original model we will omit them for now and we will directly see the results in error testing and training if we see in our training, we can see that we are getting a better value of 0.62 compared to our previous value of 0.59. But when we go into testing, we see that we are getting a correlation of 0.10. So just to be on the safer side, we can run the code again. As you know, neural networks have different values and different results in MATLAB. So if we see that here again, can see that in training we are getting a results of 0.56 which is almost same as the first test but in our testing value we are getting a correlation of 0.3215 which is very less compared to our previous results of 0.60 so based on this comparison we can understand that although we did not have more information but still 
our wavelet model with a prediction value of 0.60 in testing is doing pretty well compared to our simple neural network model so this tells us that when we use the components of wavelets in this decomposition type of format we can get the models with higher accuracy if we are able to use more number of variables so based on this understanding we can develop a model in our next video we will use precipitation and discharge to predict tomorrow's flood seeing how well this wavelet concept will be used for prediction of our models so another thing we can also think about when developing this model is finding out what are the correlations between this decomposed components and original data and also thereby we can choose only those components of this decomposition scale and try to see if it is increasing our prediction or not so these components we will discuss in our next video so that is it for this video if you have any queries regarding the concept which we used in this video you can put the questions in the comments and i will answer them as soon as possible regarding the lines of code which we have used i'll put them in the description and you can use it for your own purposes